a uh, working day for an air traffic controller could be massively varied depending on the role that they're currently in. Uh, you could be at sea, uh, in which case if you're a leading hand at sea then you'll be um, taking charge of pre-flight briefings of your uh, air crews before they go off for different sorties and then you're in the seat controlling that aircraft around the sky in the operational environment. Uh, you could be here at an air traffic tower uh, where you, you come in and you uh, take up any one of the uh, different uh, disciplines within air traffic control and apply your trade uh, onshore uh, to all of the squadrons that are shore based. So one thing that's really unique about being an aircraft controller on board a, a frigate or a destroyer is you're the only person on board that can do your job. You're the SME in aviation, you're the link between the ship on one side and an embarked flight when they come on um, and you're that, that tie position that links the ship with the aircraft. Um, in the ops room when you're working day to day you're the SME on aviation so people of all ranks will come to you for advice um, and there's, there's kind of a, a niche skill that, that we have um, that gets respected quite well. Uh, so when aircraft controllers start their training it'll be at HMS Rally for um, basic training, they'll do the, the package there. On completion of that they'll go to HMS Collinwood for a, a few weeks, um, roughly five weeks. They'll learn the basics of warfare, of using the systems that are used on board, um, gain basic skills and then from then they'll move to Yeovilton, so they'll come to Ransack for 15 weeks. Um, at this point we teach the basics of aircraft control, um, actual controlling of an aircraft in simulators, briefing in classrooms, getting lessons specific to aviation. Um, following on from this stage, they'll move back to HMS Collingwood for a period of about 15 weeks. Um, at this point, they conduct more tactical training, um, further their knowledge on the basics of aircraft control, and then they move into um, working with different branches in the Navy to create an ops room team. On completion of that, they'll go on leadership course, so LRLC, um, conduct four weeks of leadership and be promoted to lead in hand on completion to then join the front line. When their trainees arrive, um, they're quite timid potentially. They don't have um, overly a lot of confidence. Um, so throughout this stage, we look to build on the skills they've learned at Rally, um, get them out of their comfort zone a bit more. Um, they work on a lot of leadership briefs here. They're briefing um, Killux all the way up to the warrant officer. Um, and gaining confidence. The most challenging aspect for me so far has been joining my first ship as a lean aircraft controller. Integrating into such a professional team when you're new to the role and with so much responsibility placed on you has definitely been a challenge. I found the training to become an aircraft controller both challenging but rewarding at the same time. Doing something that you don't know much about before, they have to constantly improve your capacity and your knowledge of the role. Every time you learn something, the next week you're learning something new applying that all together and then finally coming out at the end of your training.